All right, everybody. So here is our short video on linear to angular variables. So we're learning at this point how to translate between our linear variables and our angular variables. Right, our, sorry, our linear variables, right, we have, um, oops, sorry, I was about to, be, to do the opposite. Linear to angular variables. Linear variables we have, right, like D, and that translates to delta theta. We have uh, velocity initial, that translates to omega naught. We have velocity final, omega final. Acceleration translates to alpha. Time stays as time. Okay, so those are our five variables that we have. They go back and forth just fine. But however, if I'm, let's say I'm given a, let's take a closer look at these. If I'm given a, um, if I'm given a ball that's rolling, let's say I'm given this ball, let's say it's rolling. All right, things only roll because, things only roll because, right, there's friction between this point. So there's force of friction that goes back this way because the center of this object's mass gets pushed out. But friction pulls the bottom around, so this causes the whole thing to roll. Okay, so I'm going to use this, this point here. Let's just call this point on top. I'm just going to have the red dot. All right, here's our radius of our object. Okay, if this object rolls a little bit, right, this object's going to roll, but this red dot's not going to be on top anymore. It's going to roll over somewhat. So we'll have this red object rolling. If we let it roll a little bit more, what does it do? Oh, well, we have our object, and the red dot is going to, it's not going to be over here. It'll roll a little bit further, so it'll roll over here. If we let it roll a little bit more, what's it going to do? Well, same exact thing. Red dot, maybe it's on the bottom now. And then we let it roll again, or let it roll a little further. Um, so every single one of these is the same object. It's just rolled further and further until eventually, eventually, um, sorry, blue pen, eventually we will get this object, we'll get that red dot to come back to the top. So maybe it's up there and then it's come back to the top. So we have our object and it rolls a bit, red dot moves, rolls a bit, red dot moves, rolls a bit, red dot moves, until it kind of finally comes back to red dot being on top. So between here and here, we'll call that, I right, will call that our initial position. We'll call this our final position. Um, that's in terms of angular position. How about initial position X, final position X final? Okay. How do we know how far it's traveled between these? Well, in terms of an angular displacement from omega initial to omega final, right, that's gone some amount delta theta. But if we take this case where we start with red on top and we end with red on top, how far has, how far has this gone through a circle? It's gone one entire circle, which means it's moved a total distance of 2 pi radians. But then how about from x to x final? How can we get the displacement from this? Well, okay, here's, here's kind of the conceptual thing. We'll walk through the concept of it. You don't really have to know how to do the concept. You just have to be able to do the math, basically. Um, but as, as we have this dot here, right, this dot will stay on the ground. This dot stays right here as the wheel moves around it. So this dot kind of pops up, and then the black dot will move up. It's kind of opposite of wherever the red dot is, is where this black dot would be. But between the ground and the wheel, is there any sliding occurring? No, there's no sliding. This is all, all right, that's why rolling is static friction, is because it's not sliding. Which means, how far has it gone from here to over here? How far has that been? Well, it'll be the same as one circumference of the circle. Right? If the circle rolls around through one rotation of the circle, it will have rolled one circumference 
So this displacement is going to be 2 pi times the radius. And I should use lowercase r for the radius consistently. So 2 pi times the radius, because it's the same as a circumference. If it's rolled over once, then it's a circumference. Okay. So then, the next question becomes, how do we relate delta theta to displacement? Well, delta theta is 2 pi. Displacement is 2 pi r. So here's actually what we get from this. We get that the displacement is equal to delta theta, right, this 2 pi, times r. And that's how we can translate mathematically between these. D is delta theta times r. So the displacement is just, we've gone 2 pi radians is the full circle, but then we multiply that by the radius, and that's how we get the displacement. If we look at our other variables that we have up here, I, I circled this and I didn't mean to, but um, if you look at our other variables, velocity to angular velocity, acceleration to angular acceleration, we actually see the exact same relationship. Um, so I'll move this over. I need to grab the full box. We see the exact same relationship. We see that our velocity is equal to omega r. And A is equal to alpha r. Right, velocity is distance over time. So if we're going for velocity is distance over time, but if we want our, uh, our, our angular velocity, omega, that's going to be delta theta over time. But now that we've established this relationship between d and delta theta, we can kind of plug this in up here because d is delta theta times r over time. But delta theta over time, that's just angular velocity. So we get velocity is equal to omega r. Basically, the same exact thing applies to a is equal to alpha r. Here's the thing. AP does not give these to you. However, they will expect you to use them. I give this to you because I think you shouldn't have to suffer. So if you look at my rotation and torque, right? You we get these, these equations that we've been looking at, period and frequency relating them to omega. And then these are the motion equations that we've had, or these down here. Those are our motion equations. I give these to you for velocity and acceleration relating them to omega and alpha. I don't give you displacement over here. I don't give you this one because I'm hoping that you see linear equals angular times r. I'm hoping that you just see that based on these other two that are highlighted here. However, I have the AP equation sheet pulled up on my third tab up here. Here's the, the AP equation sheet that you will get on the test. Uh, it's been the same equation sheet since 2015. Uh, but that's the front side. Here's the back side. You get the, the two angular motion equations right there that are the same ones on my equation sheet. Here's all this stuff with torque that we haven't done with, uh, that we haven't done yet. That's the little weird looking T is another Greek letter tau. That's for torque. Angular momentum is L, all that kind of stuff. But you don't see velocity equals omega R. You just don't see that anywhere, or D equals delta theta R. It's just not there. So you will have to remember this. And the way I like to remember this is omega, right? Or velocity, we find omega. It's not given to us, but omega R. Omega R. So if you want to find the velocity, you just say omega. And there you go. There's your velocity. All right, yet another thing to hopefully make you laugh while you're taking the test. Maybe bring a little, uh, bring a little joy in the stressful situations of these tests. So our velocity is equal to omega, and then you can see linear is equal to angular times the radius. All right, you want to know velocity? Omega. So linear variables are equal to the angular variable times the radius. 
from that, you should hopefully be able to say, okay, that means A is equal to alpha R. And then you go the other way. That means D is equal to delta theta R, all those kinds of things. So if I want to know how far something has gone in, or when I'm given angular displacement, or maybe you've used motion equations to find angular displacement, if you want to know how far it's gone translationally, right, that means like left to right, that would be distance. All you have to do is you multiply delta theta times R. For velocity, all right, let's, let's say you have, let's say there's a car. Okay, terrible car, but I'm not an art teacher. Terrible car. However, but if, if you want to know the car's velocity, however, maybe you're given the radius of the tire is like, um, maybe the radius is, I don't know, 0.2 meters. And maybe it's moving at an angular velocity. Each tire is rotating maybe with a period. Each tire is rotating with a period of, oh, sorry. Rotating with a period of, I don't know, 0.02 seconds, something like that. That would mean, right, omega is angular displacement over time. So if to complete one circle, 2 pi over the time for one circle, t, that gives us 2 pi over uh, period 0.02. This would spit out 314 radians per second. All right. So that's our omega. So how fast is this car moving? If we know the radius of its tire and we know its angular velocity, how fast is it moving? Well, velocity is omega. So we take omega, 314, times radius. By the way, they, I've just done this calculation enough to know this is pi times 100. Um, you can just throw this in your calculator and you'll get 314. 314 times the radius, 0.2. Okay, so that should spit out 62.8. But what are the units on this? What are the units? Okay, so I'm going to... I'm actually going to pull these aside, pull the parentheses aside to um, kind of show you the units, right? 314, that's in radians per second radians per second, and then 0.2, that's in meters. Well, remember, radians is kind of like, oops, sorry, radians is a fake unit, so it doesn't really exist. It's just a way that we keep track of angles, but radians is kind of a fake unit. It, it doesn't exist, but we just, we, we use radians to keep track of angles and just to say, hey, this is how we're keeping track of an angle, basically so we know it's not in degrees. But radians is kind of a fake unit. Um, so all we get is we get meters on top and seconds on bottom. So we get meters per second, which is exactly what we expect for velocity, right? Our velocity is in meters per second. So that might be the other way that you can remember that V is omega times R is because this is essentially it's radians per second, which is per second. And then radius is in units of meters. So you get meters per second has to give you meters per second. So you can use either velocity is omega, omega times r, or you can use uh, the units by saying omega is basically one over seconds because radians is just a fake unit. And then r is in meters, so you get meters per second. All right, that's basically all you need to know. All right, so just linear to angular, you now know how to make these translations, oh my, sorry, trying to get a different color. You now know how to make these translations. You just, to get from D to delta theta, you have to do delta theta times R. From velocity to omega, take omega times R, omega. A to alpha, alpha times R, fishier. That doesn't work as well. Okay, fishier. Ah, acceleration is fishier than other things. Okay. Anyway, and then time, time is the same. You don't have to do this translation for time. Okay. If you have questions, let me know. But otherwise, this now pairs with, this set of information uh, pairs with 
uh, if I zoom out a little bit, this pairs with, we've done rotational motion. This is linear to angular variables. Um, starting with our merry-go-round over here, pairs with 7.03. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, get to work.